Hello, hello, beautiful people. It's your girl, Journey with Kiki, and I am back with another Black History reading. And this person that I will be talking about is Booker T. Washington. Yes, Booker T. Washington. Him right here. This is who I will be talking about. And I'm going to do a quick reading on him. Okay? A quick reading. Booker T. Washington, 1856 to 1915. Educator and founder of the Tuskegee Institute. One second, guys. I am thirsty. A little history on Booker T. Washington. Booker Talia Farrell Washington was an American educator, author, orator, and advisor to several presidents of the United States. Between 1890 and 1915, Washington was the dominant leader in the African American community and of the contemporary black elite. He was born April 5th, 1856, Hales Ford, Westlake Corner, Virginia. Died 1914, died November 14, 1915, Tuskegee. Spouse, Margaret Murray Washington, 1893-1915. Education, Wayland Seminary, our seminary, 1893, sorry, 1878 to 1879, Hampton University. Children, Booker T. Washington, Jr., Portia M. Washington, Ernest Davidson Washington, parents, Washington Ferguson, and Jane Ferguson. Booker T., Washington. Hmm, did I just read this part? No, I did not. Booker T. Washington, 1956-1915, was born into slavery and rose to become a leading African-American intellectual of the 19th century. Found in Tuskegee Normal and Industrial Institute, now Tus Tuskegee University. In 1881, and the National Negro Business League, two decades later, Washington advised Presidents Theodore Roosevelt and William Howard Taft his infamous conflicts with black leaders like Webb Du Bois over segregation caused a stir. But today, he is remembered as the most influential American, African American speaker of his time. Booker T. Washington, Parents and Early Life. Booker Talia Farrell Washington was born on April 5th, 1856 in a hut of Franklin County, Virginia. His mother was a cook for the plantation owner. His father, a white man, was unknown to Washington. At the close of the Civil War, all the enslaved people owned by James and Elizabeth Burroughs, including nine-year-old Booker, his siblings, and his mother, were free. Jane moved her family to Madden, Malden, West Virginia, soon after she married Washington Ferguson, a free black man. Booker T. Washington, Education. And Malden, Washington, was only allowed to go to school after working from 4 to 9 a.m. each morning in a local salt works before class. It was a second job in a local coal mine where he first heard 
Two fellow works discuss the Hampton Institute, a school for formerly enslaved people in southeastern Virginia, founded in 1868 by Brigadier General Samuel Chapman. Chapman has been a leader of black troops for the Union during the Civil War and was dedicated to improving educational opportunities for African Americans. In 1872, Washington walked the 500 miles to Hampton, where he was an excellent student and received his grades and received high grades. He went on to study at Wayland Seminary in Washington, D.C., but had so impressed Chapman that he was invited to return to Hampton as a teacher in 1879. It was Chapman who would refer Washington for a role as principal of a new school for African Americans in Tuskegee, Alabama. The Tuskegee Normal and Industrial Institute, today's Tuskegee University, Washington assumed the role in 1881 at age 25 and will work at the Tuskegee Institute until his death in 1915. It was Washington who hired George Washington Carver to teach agriculture in Tuskegee at Tuskegee in 1896. Carver would go on to be a celebrated figure in black history in his own right, making huge advances in botany and farming technology. Booker T. Washington beliefs and rivalry with Webb Du Bois. Life in the post-reconstruction era South was challenging for black people. Discrimination was rife in the age of Jim Crow laws. Exercising the right to vote under the 15th Amendment was dangerous and access to jobs and education was severely limited. With the dawn of the Ku Klux Klan, the threat of retaliatory violence for advocating for civil rights was real. In perhaps his most famous speech given on September 18, 1895, Washington told a majority of white audience in Atlanta that the way forward for African Americans was self-improvement through an attempt to dignify and glorify common labor. He felt it was better to remain separate from whites than to attempt desegregation as long as whites granted their blacks countrymen and women access to economic progress, education, and justice under U.S. courts. The wisest of my race understand that the agitation of question of social equality is extremist is the extremist folly and that progress in the enjoyment of all the privileges that will come to us most be the result of severe and constant struggle rather than artificial forcing. The opportunity to earn a dollar in a factory just now is worth in, in, infinitely, inf, infinitely more than to spend a dollar in an opera house. His speech was sharply criticized by Webb Du Bois, who repudiated what he called the Atlanta Compromise in a chapter of his famous 1903 book, The Souls of Black Folk. <laughs> Let me say that again. The Souls of Black Folk. Opposition to Washington's view on race inspired the Niagara Movement. 
1905 to 1909. Du Bois will go on to fund the NAACP in 1909. Because of Washington, outsized stature in the black community, dissenting views were strongly squashed. Du Bois and other criticized Washington harsh treatment of viral black newspaper and black thinkers who dared to challenge his opinions and authority. Hmm. Okay. Books by Booker T. Washington. Washington, a famed public speaker known for his sense of humor, who also I'm sorry, was also the author of five books. The Story of My Life and Work, 1900. Up from Slavery, 1901. The Story of Negro, The Rise of the Race from Slavery, 1909. The Larger, My Larger Education, 1911. The Man Furthest Down, 1912. Booker T. Washington, the first Booker T. Washington, first African American in the White House. Booker T. Washington became the first African American to be invited to the White House in 1901 when President Theodore Roosevelt invited him to dine with him. It was caused it caused a huge uproar among white Americans especially in the Jim Crow South and in the press and came on the heels of the publication of his autobiography, Up From Slavery. But Roosevelt saw Washington as a brilliant advisor on racial matters, a practice his successor, President William Howard Taft, continued. Booker T. Washington Death and Legacy. Booker T. Washington Legacy is complex. While he lived through an epic sea change in the lives of African Americans, his public views supporting segregation seem outdated today. His emphasis, his emphasize or emphasis on economic self-determination over political and civil rights fell out of favor as the views of the largest critic, Webb Du Bois, took, rot, took root and inspired the civil rights movement. We know now that Washington secretly financed court cases and challenged segregation and wrote letters in code to define against lynch mobs. His work in the field of education helped give access to new hope for thousands of African Americans. By 1913, at the dawn of the administration of Woodrow Wilson, Washington had largely fallen out of favor. He remained at the Tuskegee Institute until congestive heart failure ended his life on, 19, on November 14th. 1915, he was 59 years old. Washington left behind a vastly improved Tuskegee Institute with over 1,500 students and a faculty of 200 and an endowment of nearly 2 million to continue to carry on its work. And that's the end. That is the end of Booker T. Washington. So him and Du Bois had some debates on um, some of the things, movements that they were agreeing up on and disagreeing up on. Um, that is really interesting to um, find out and to know um, a little bit more about them two wonderful guys. Yeah. So if you are not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe, comment, like, and share. I would love to have you as a family member. Um, it is Black History Month. Um, 
there's a lot of great content creators out here that is doing it on an everyday basis. Whether if it's just a little speech, a coloring, a, a whole article, whatever it is, do what you know they have it. They got it going on. Do what you feel like you want to do for Black History. Um, yeah, so when I have the time, I'll get on and I'll read and maybe do a coloring. Um, but I appreciate you guys for watching. Let me know your thoughts about these two. Actually, three, because it was D Theodore as well. Let me know what you think about this reading. Let me know in the comments. Please, thumbs it up, thumbs it up, thumbs it up. And share it. Share, share, share. It's people out here in the world that don't know about these wonderful guys. So share it, okay? Um, till the next video. Bye.